neighbor, do you clearly understand what you are undertaking? Yes. yes. Godparents, yes. you can come up here. Are you ready to help the parents of this child in their duty as Christian parents? Yes. yes. <clears throat> Olivia, the Christian community welcomes you with great joy. In its name, I claim you for Christ our Savior. By the sign of the cross, I now trace on your forehead. And I invite your parents and godparents to do the same. <laughs> And let us now continue with our celebration by joining together and singing number 599, Blessed Be the Lord. That's number 599. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, the God of mercy, the God who saves. I shall not fear the dark of night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Let us take a moment and call to mind our failings and our shortcomings, asking this God who loves us to bring us healing and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. And I ask the Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. 
God the Father, mercy through the death and resurrection of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, has sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. Through the ministry of the church, may God grant you pardon and peace, and I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Together, let us raise our voices in our wonderful hymn of praise and glory.
we make our prayer for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, is this not the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice? To undo the thongs of the yoke? To let the oppressed go free? And to break every yoke? It is not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless and poor into your house? When you see the naked to cover them? and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. God just met is a light in darkness to the upright. The just man is a light in darkness to the upright. A light shines through the darkness for the upright. He is gracious and merciful and just. Well for the man who is gracious and lands, who conducts his affairs with justice. The just man is alive. shall be an everlasting remembrance. An evil report he shall not fear. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. The just man is alive. shall not fear, lavishly he gives to the poor, his justice shall endure forever, his horn shall be exalted in glory, the just man is alive. Jesus Christ. 
and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and the power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 God. <laughs> Universal and assent uh, to the uh, to this uh, child being brought into uh, into the arms of the church. What a wonderful uh, what a wonderful experience it is for sac us sacramentally, but also uh, for a sense of us being part of the larger uh, of the larger church. Um, I was uh, thinking a lot about these readings, and and I pray with them over the week, and uh, I have the opportunity uh, before I come here to say mass at the hospital, so I I hear them there. Uh, it's a little less formal there, and so, so. But I was thinking uh, about this notion of of what we hear in the prophet Isaiah. This becomes for the people of Israel the criteria to uh, the criteria to be a righteous Jew, to care for the widow, the alien, and the orphan. And so we hear the prophet speaking to the people of Israel. Don't give me so much lip service, right? But the reason that I'm freeing you from your oppression is so that you might care for those who have less than you. And we hear this uh, reflection in the gospel then. We hear Jesus saying that in order for us to be salt, uh, uh, salt and light to the world, that we must behave in that way. Uh, we must act in that way. And I was thinking about this relationship. The middle term here is St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. And St. Paul, who had just uh, finished preaching in Athens using a philosophical framework, didn't have much success. So he approached the Corinthians who are very comfortable in their, in their logic and their rationality. And he comes and he preaches to them the folly of the cross. 
And he says that all the wisdom in the world can't understand that, right? But it is in the surrender of that that we find our salvation. And so we hear that. And so, so these readings are tied together by this notion in many ways that to, 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 uh, to be light and salt to the, to the world, we have to surrender ourselves and all those things that we think make us powerful and strong, right? And, uh, and behave in ways that we know to be right, which are right in front of us. Uh, many times when I meet with people who I'm going to marry or baptize their children, or in some cases uh, celebrate the uh, final sacraments of the church, they'll say to me, Father, we haven't been in church for a long time. Father, you can tell we're not practicing Catholics. Father, you can tell. And I think to myself, and I say this to them, God is not standing uh, writing down how many times we have gone to church. I don't think God's interested in that at all. We come to church and celebrate with each other because it nourishes our souls. It gives us a context in which to move and breathe and have our being. What God is going to ask us is exactly what we hear in this reading. When you saw me hungry, did you feed me? When you saw me naked, did you clothe me? When you saw me thirsty, did you give me something to drink? Were you light to the people who needed it? Were you salt to those who needed it? And I think about you here in the parish of St. Francis of Assisi, how you do that, how you are a light, how you are a city built on a hill, how your light shines in this world in really profound ways. You don't always know it, but I'm in different places, and I'm only there because of you. I'm only there because you have come here and you have paid attention to this command of Christ to love each other unconditionally and without any barriers. And so, so I'm in places where I know that your light is viewed by others, right? And so they may not always be here in this place with us, but every Sunday I'm in the psychiatric hospital and I can be there because of you. Every Thursday I'm in the Arden Court Alzheimer's Care Unit because I can be there. Father Joe is at Van Dyke Nursing Home. Uh, uh, we are down at the prison every night. Our children in school right now uh, are being light to the world. They are making um, candy and treats so that I can take them down to the prisoners in the jail and they can have some semblance of a Valentine's Day. What, what, a, what a remarkable, they'll never know who did that, right? But you know who did that, right? The fact that, that, uh, that, that, um, that Leah and Christopher are asking their child to be baptized in this place in the midst of this community speaks volumes about the light to the world that you are, right? So, so I, I know that often when I preach, I see some reflection of St. Francis in the scriptures, but I can't help it because that's what you do. And that's what you do. You create, uh, you create, you create uh, um, some spice, I think, in the heart of the church Catholic, right? I don't think that they're always so pleased with us, but that's all right, right? So we still gather here, and salt is a little spicy, right? And so uh, in the ancient days, salt's preserved, right? So meat couldn't be preserved without salt. So that we preserve the true elements of the faith, which is the love of God, at the heart of the gospel. Sometimes salt was spread on the ground so nothing would grow. So by your light, you dispel darkness and evil, right? Uh, the other use of salt, and it's still used today in the Middle East, I'm not an expert on this, but, but I was reading about it before I came here. Um, uh, in Jesus' time, there would be a common oven, and that's where the bread would be baked. And so uh, there would be uh, salt blocks placed there, and young girls would have to go out and get a donkey or camel dung and mix that with salt and make patties out of that and then place it on the salt block. The salt acted as a catalyst, and it would catch fire, and the bread would be baked. Isn't that interesting? And I hear even in, in Israel today, some homes still have these ovens on the side of their house, as opposed to using um, uh, uh, gas or electric. So it's really interesting. Salt is a catalyst. So we are asked to be a catalyst. So when Jesus says, if salt loses that property, what, what is it good for, right? What is it good for? So you and I are called to be a catalyst. We are called by Christ to catch this world on fire with his love. And every time we celebrate something like this, we add to that spark. Every time we come together and we celebrate uh, 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 an event like uh, the, the, the baptism of Olivia, every time you proclaim to the world uh, that everybody is welcome here and it doesn't matter, you, are, you, light, uh, uh, you add more fire to that light. You are truly a city built on a hill. And so, uh, and so, so I just want you to know that that's not to feel comfortable with ourselves, right? Because there's always more work to be done, right? There's always more work to be done. Um, um, we're, we're going to talk about how that can can happen in different ways, uh, uh, especially in this inclement weather. Uh, a couple of years, I taking down food for people who live under the bridge uh, in Newark. So 
I might start to do that again. I have to be careful because I have my black habit on and then I wear a black cape. So sometimes I frighten them. They don't know who's actually right? so, uh, so, uh, so I have to usually announce myself, ring a bell or something. Uh, but uh, Lou asked me last week if we could do some of that. Each and every time a parishioner asks me something about moving outside of ourselves and incarnating Christ's love in the world, it speaks to me about how you are salt and light to the world. So let us continue. Let us continue as we welcome this wonderful child, uh, Olivia, into the life of Christ uh, and Christ Church through the sacrament of baptism. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us ask the Lord Jesus Christ to look lovingly on this child, Olivia, who is to be baptized, and on her parents and godparents, and on all the baptized. By the mystery of your death and resurrection, bathe Olivia Grace in light. Give her the new life of baptism, and welcome her into your holy church. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Through baptism and confirmation, make her your faithful follower and a witness to your gospel. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lead Olivia Grace by a holy light to the joys of God's kingdom. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Make the lives of her parents, Leanne and Christopher, and of her godparents, examples of faith to inspire her. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep her family always in your love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Renew the grace of our baptism in each one of us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For what else and whom else shall we pray? Pray for the soul of David Barachek. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who work with the homeless in shelters, who share their bread with the hungry in soup kitchens and food pantries, that their light shine forth like the dawn to enlighten the complacent, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those afflicted by war, refugees, and civilians, especially in Syria, that the voices of diplomats create a climate of reconciliation, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those with cancer, and for their caregivers, that the Lord fill them with patience, and there are any sick whom we should especially remember. Kathleen. Julia Nora Ellison. Lori Pellon. <coughs> for Alona, Catherine, and Angelo. Adrian Michael. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that Lord raise them up on the last day. And are there any others whom we should especially remember? Roger Taylor. Dorothy Chinsky. Hussein Franklin. <laughs> we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. At the celebration of baptism, our bidding prayers, our prayers of the faithful, are concluded with the wonderful litany of the saints. On this day, the entire church celebrates with Olivia Grace her baptism into the body of Christ. And we, as, as uh, Christians, know that we move in the communion of saints, those who are in the presence of God, those who are here on this journey with us, and those who are not yet in the beatific vision. And so what we do on this day is we invoke all of these saints who rejoice with us at the, uh, at the baptism of Olivia Grace. And so your response will be when they tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Mary and Joseph, pray for us, pray for us.
Olivia, we anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Savior. May he strengthen you with his power who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, God uses the sacrament of water to give his divine life to those who believe in him. Let us turn to him and ask him to pour out his gift of life from, the, from this font, on this child, Olivia, whom he has chosen. Father, you give us grace through sacramental signs and, tells us, and tell us of the, that tells us of the wonders of your unseen power. In baptism, we use your gift of water, which you have made a rich symbol of the grace you give us in this sacrament. At the very dawn of creation, your spirit breathed on these waters, making them a wellspring of all holiness. The waters of the great flood, you made a sign in the waters of baptism that make an end to sin and a new beginning of goodness. To the waters of the Red Sea, you led Israel out of slavery to be an image of God's holy people, set free from sin by baptism. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. Your son willed that blood and water should flow from his side as he hung upon the cross. After his resurrection, he said to his disciples, Go out and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. Father, look now with love upon your church and unseal for her the fountain of baptism. By the power of the Spirit, give to the water of this font the grace of your Son. You created us in your own image. Cleanse us from sin and every and, and, and new birth of innocence by water and the Spirit. We ask you, Father, with your Son, to send the Holy Spirit upon this water of the font. May all who are buried with Christ in the death of baptism rise also with him to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> we, the parish community, and the family and friends of Olivia, uh, Olivia Grace and Leah and Christopher, now uh, renew uh, the promises of our own baptism. So when I ask you these questions, you're going to respond loudly, I do. Do you, re uh, dear parents and godparents, you have come here to you have come here to present this child for baptism. By water and the Holy Spirit, Olivia Grace is to receive the great the gift of new life from God, who is love. On your part, you must make it your constant care to bring Olivia up in the practice of the faith. See that this divine life which God gives to Olivia is kept safe from the poison of sin to grow always stronger in her heart. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, renew now the vows of your own baptism. Reject sin, profess your faith in Christ Jesus. This is the faith of the church. This is the faith in which this child is about to be baptized. Do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works. I do. And all his empty promises. I do. Do you reject sin so to as live to us so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. Do you reject Satan, father of sin and, 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 and prince of darkness? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. Do you believe, do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Leah and Christopher, is it your will that Olivia Grace be baptized into the faith of the church which we have all professed with you? You get a little wet, sweetheart. I baptize you, Olivia Grace, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Olivia is now going to be anointed with the oil of chrism. The oil of chrism is what you and I received at our baptism, what we were confirmed with, what Brother GT and I were ordained with, and uh, when I was consecrated at Bishop with, is the oil of priest, prophet, and king. It represents for Olivia Grace and for you and I that we have been baptized into the role of priest, prophet, and king so that the, the prayers of God should always be on our lips and the word of God uh, in our hearts, and that we might move with right judgment according to the counsels of the Lord. So I'm going to anoint her with the oil of chrism, which is uh, always blessed new at the chrism mass on Holy Thursday, and is mixed with a very aromatic balm um, uh, called balsam. And so, um, so when you're all done uh, and when you leave, you can smell that Olivia Grace has been christened. She would, uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful scent. Thank you, guys. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you, Olivia Grace, from sin, giving you a new birth, by, new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and welcomed you into his holy people. 
He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation as Christ was anointed priest. That's all right. <laughs> Prophet. And king. So you may live so may you live always as a member of his body, sharing everything, sharing everlasting life. Amen. 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 You want to do oil. <laughs> All of our life happens up and down this aisle. We are carried down at baptism. We walk down for our other sacraments, and at the end of our life, we're carried out. At the beginning of our life in Christ, uh, we're given a white garment, and at the end of our life, we're asked to bring this unstained before the throne of God. And so today, we give this to Olivia Grace. Olivia Grace, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. See in this white garment the outward sign of your Christian dignity, with your family and friends to help you by word and example, bring that dignity unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. Amen. Let us join together to sing number 460. We have been baptized in Christ. It is yet that we have put on. We are washed in this water.
By God's gift of water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn to everlasting life. In his goodness, may he continue to pour out his blessings upon these sons and daughters of his. May he make them always, wherever they may be, faithful members of his holy people. May he send his peace upon all who are gathered here. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please, uh, by your applause, welcome uh, to the church. Like, 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 like. Thank you. 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's church. Lord God, you have provided food and drink to sustain our earthly life. Grant, we pray, that this bread and wine may become the sacrament that gives eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and grace. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. In you we live and move and have our being. Each day we experience the wonders of your love and receive even now a pledge and foretaste of life eternal. Possessing the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised Jesus from the dead, we hope to enjoy his paschal victory forever. And so with all the angels and saints, we sing the joyful hymn of your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Christ through the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age you gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to the setting a perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, and so, and so Lord, we humbly pray by the power of your Spirit to sanctify these gifts we have brought before you, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was handed over to death, he took bread and gave you praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> when supper was ended, he took the cup. And then he gave you thanks and praise. And handing the cup to all of those whom he loved, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah, Christ will come again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Calling to mind, Lord God, the death of your the death your son endured for our salvation his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and ready to greet him when he comes again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and see the victim by whose sacrifice you were pleased to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood of your Son may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. Let him make us an everlasting gift to you that we may share the inheritance of your saints with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and the martyrs, all your, and all your saints on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Lord, may the sacrifice which has made our peace with you 
advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servants, the patriarchs of Alexandria, Antioch, Constantinople, Jerusalem, and Rome, all bishops, priests, and deacons, all members of your church, and the entire people your son has gained for you. Merciful Father, hear the prayers of the family you have gathered here before you. Strengthen in their, strengthen in their holy resolve those today who have been joined to your people through the waters of rebirth and the gift of the anointing. Grant that they may walk always in newness of life. Unite to yourself all your children now scattered over the face of the earth. Welcome into your kingdom our departed brothers and sisters and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy with them, we hope to enjoy with them your everlasting glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you give us everything that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever.
Our hymn for communion is number 602. Be not afraid. That's number 602.
Before our closing prayer, let's uh, welcome once again Olivia Grace, uh, who's I think being fed. But anyway, so. <laughs> In absentia. Uh, thank you, uh, Christopher and uh, Leah, for bringing me to the Um I know is uh, I, uh, uh, there are uh, some new folks. You want to tell us who you are? I'm uh, Jonathan Sank. Welcome, Jonathan. Where are you from? Where are you from? Uh, Wayne. Very nice. Welcome. Uh, Candy Joseph From Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, welcome, welcome to St. Francis. Welcome to St. Francis. We don't have a baptism every Sunday, but but, uh, but it's a wonderful celebration when we do. Veronica Murphy from Jersey City. Jersey City's first name again? Veronica. Veronica, welcome, Veronica, welcome, welcome. Stephen Newt from Bluefield. From Bluefield. I met Steve and Liz. I thought they were part of the Baptist. Come on in, Leah, with, uh, with uh, Olivia. And I, I think I scared them. They said, well, we're here for mass. And I was like, oh, OK, OK. And, and uh, anyway, they're from Bluefield. So if, I, if we generally see you here twice at St. Francis, we put you to work. So I'm just you that, right? Just say no. But please come and be part of St. Francis as you can. Please absolutely come and be part of St. Francis if you can. Uh, when I do weddings, I usually joke with the photographer um, they'll ask me, because a lot of Catholic weddings, priests are a little fussy, and I, I don't have any rules about photography, but they'll say to me, do you have any rules? And I'll say, just one, you have to get my, my best side. And uh, they'll say, well, what's your best side? And, I'll, and I always say, my back side. And so as I was saying that, as I was saying that uh, perfect cue, uh, Leah, and, uh, Leah and Christopher uh, had a beautiful picture of me, and it is my back side. <laughs> just from their wedding, so I thought, well, oh, isn't that isn't that interesting? So, so it doesn't look so bad. Actually. Uh, welcome to St. Francis. I want the children. If you all would bring them, uh, do they have the gifts they need? Do they have the for the Christmas? Uh, no, they're still upstairs. Oh, they're right. still being uh, assembled. All right, so they're still being but, assembled. No worries. Yeah, okay. they they made really cute valentines and they individualized them all and put in candy treats for the ice detainees. Very and nice. so they look really great, and we're hoping to have them down in a couple minutes and take some pictures. Very nice. Allison is one of our uh, educators, one of our teachers. Uh, she teaches for a living, and so we put her to work on Sundays too, right? And, uh, yeah, he wasn't kidding about that coming twice. Like. <laughs> uh, her husband is up here. He's always very patiently supports her in everything. Uh, uh, we have an active parish here. Get involved. Gary read for the first time. He did a great job today, Gary. Thank you. <laughs> Our music ministry is sounding uh, really good. The Litany of the Saints is quite beautiful, so so it's all of our celebration, right? So so come be part of St. Francis when you can. Uh, we were having a Bible study on Wednesday nights, but the weather has not been cooperating with us, so we're suspending that until the spring. So uh, just so you know. We're uh, debating here at St. Francis, and please join us in the discussion as to whether or not have a Spanish Mass at 7 o'clock on Sunday evenings. So, uh, so if, if uh, that, that can happen, to reach out to our uh, Spanish brothers and sisters. Brother Gini and I say Mass every Sunday in Espanol in La Casa, por los Andes in La Casa. So we say Mass in Spanish down there. And so we can do it here if you want. And then don't forget, if you can't come to Mass on uh, Sunday, we have Mass at 5 o'clock on Saturday. And so, uh, so Father, Father Kevin was here yesterday, uh, and Father Kevin and Father Joe. So we rotate through that. So, so come if you can, right? Come if you can. And uh, I think that I, I usually had you stand up and sit down, but uh, but uh, Katie's dad half yelled at me, so now I just have you sit down. Until the floor. So um, other announcements? I don't know. Let us sing happy birthday to our dear Bishop George on Wednesday. So. Mexico and so 
So I'm going to uh, spend some time uh, with my family a little bit in Philadelphia. So keep me in your prayers. And hopefully I'll stay out of trouble. <laughs> yes, I just want to say uh, real quickly that our charity of the month here is the National Federation of the Blind. Thank you, Stephen. We will have representatives here. The, uh, I think it's the, uh, the last Sunday of the month when we have our brunch. Very nice. Uh, there'll be representatives from the State Association too here to join us in worship. Thank you. Uh, Stephen reminds us we have a monthly charity. And so what we ask you to do is to identify that charity for us. There's a box in the back, and you can put that in there. And so that month, our charity goes to that particular charity that you've identified for us. We have an ongoing charity for the Hedrick Martin School in New York, uh, which is the uh, grade school and high school for LBGT youth who have been uh, bullied out of their own schools. So we, we support them with clothing. So that's an ongoing charity. And we also gather coats for um, for, uh, I forget what the name of that is, it's uh, Jersey. Jersey Cares. So that's ongoing, but we have specific uh, charities. So thank you, Stephen. Okay. I was going to answer that, but no. Did I, did I get it? Okay. So let us pray. Merciful God, you have invited us to share the one bread and the one cup. Enable us to live as one in Christ and to labor gladly for the salvation of all. Grant this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass ascended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us all go forth, joining together and singing number 548, City of God. Turned into dancing for the Lord of light and her love. 